everybody. Hope everybody's been having a great start to the day. So I had uh, my exercise and usual vibe in the morning, which has been amazing and wonderful and got me into a really good mood for a great day. And to straighten this out a little bit. So here we are, another new great day. And yesterday was very exciting. I got lots of uh, new kinds of things done at the end of the day. Played a great game of chess and won that one. But right now it is time for our usual Rich Dad Poor Dad, which is in Chinese. So we're not going to read that one because I don't think most of you are going to understand that. So we are on The Art of Thinking Clearly, which is another really great book. Uh, don't always agree with everything, but that's why we do the commentary. Um, and we were reading chapter 29, which is why the balancing force of the universe is baloney and how things don't naturally automatically go back to something else. And we're talking about gambling with that one. And today is chapter 30. That's already a whole month. Unbelievable. Why the Wheel of Fortune Makes Our Head Spin. And it's called The Anchor. And we're going to have to find out. I don't remember this chapter from the last time I read it. So we're going to have to make it up as we go. Not what I'm reading. That I will read uh, directly. But we will uh, make up the commentary as we go. Because I can't remember what's in there. Okay, who's ready for some reading? And thank you for the love hearts, by the way. Uh, we have Nympho101 sending some love hearts. And they're actually floating up on the screen, which is uh, really nice. So good morning to everybody. And let's get some reading done. So when was Abraham Lincoln born? If you don't know the year off the top of your head and your smartphone battery has just died, how do you answer this? Perhaps you know that he was president during the Civil War in the 1860s and that he was the first U.S. president to be assassinated. Looking at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, you don't see a young, energetic man, but something more akin to a worn-out 60-year-old veteran. The memorial must depict him at the height of his political power, say at the age of 60. Let's assume that he was assassinated in the mid-1860s, making 1805 our estimate for the year he was born. The correct answer is 1809. So how did we work it out? We found an anchor to help us, the 1860s, and work from there to an educated guest. That might be a little bit easier for Americans. However, it's good to know as much history as you can, potentially. And yes, there are other ways in which we can uh, calculate these things as well. And uh, let's have a look. Somebody's asking where I'm from. So I'm from Holland, but I'm in Australia, and I've lived here for most of my life. Okay. Whenever we have to guess something, the length of the Mississippi River, population density in Russia, the number of nuclear power plants in France, we use anchors. We start with something we are sure of and venture into unfamiliar territory from there. How else could we do it? Just pick a number off the top of our heads? That would be irrational. Unfortunately, we also use anchors when we don't need to. For example, one day in a lecture, a professor placed a bottle of wine on the table. He asked the students to write down the last two digits of their social security numbers and then decide if they would be willing to spend the amount on the wine. In the auction that followed, students with higher numbers bid nearly twice as much as students with lower numbers. The social security digits worked as an anchor, albeit in a hidden and misleading way. So it's completely random. It makes no sense. And yet our brains trick us with this. The psychologist Amos Tversky conducted an experiment involving a wheel of fortune. He had participants spin it, and afterwards they were asked how many member states the United Nations had. Their guesses confirmed the anchor effect. The highest estimates came from people who had spun high numbers on the wheel. Researchers Russo and Shoemaker asked students in what year Attila the Hun suffered his crushing defeat in Europe. Just like the example with social security numbers, the participants were anchored, this time with the last few digits of their telephone number. The result, people with higher numbers chose later years and vice versa. If you're wondering, Attila's demise came about in 453. So very important to be able to, well, I think the whole book demonstrates that it's really important to be able to detach yourself from what you necessarily already know that is related or anything that is going to sway your thought. And when you can do that, you're in control of the outcome as opposed to being led down a certain path. Another experiment. Students and professional real estate agents were given a tour of a house and asked to estimate its value. 
beforehand, they were informed about a randomly generated listed sales price. As might be expected, the anchor influenced the students. The higher this price, the higher they valued the property. And the professionals, did they value the house objectively? No, they were similarly influenced by the random anchor amount. That is very interesting for you real estate investors. The more uncertain the value of something, such as real estate, company stock, or art, the more susceptible even experts are to anchors. And we already spoke about that uh, yesterday or the day before as well. Uh, wine experts who were given a white wine that had some food coloring, some red food coloring added to it, thought that the wine was red, described it as a red, said it was more robust and wasn't fruity and wasn't fresh and wasn't all of the things that they usually use to describe white wine. They described it as a red wine because their brain was tricked, thought it was red wine, and it tasted like red wine, even though it could only have tasted like white wine. Very, very interesting indeed. Anchors abound, and we all clutch to them. The recommended retail price printed on many products is nothing more than an anchor. Keep that in mind. Sales professionals know they must establish the price at an early stage, long before they have an offer. Also, it has been proven that if teachers know students pass grades, it influences how they will mark new work. The most recent grades act as a starting point. In my early years, I had a quick stint at a consulting firm. My boss was a pro when it came to using anchors. In his, conversa in his first conversation with any client, he made sure to fix an opening price, which, by the way, almost criminally exceeded our internal costs. I'll tell you this now so you're not surprised when you receive the quote. Mr. So-and-so, you've just completed a similar project for one of your competitors, and it was in the range of $5 million. The anchor was dropped. The price negotiation started at exactly $5 million. So be very careful when people are throwing out numbers or information that is given before they give you a price or before you have the other relevant information. Because when that happens, uh, if they tell you that something happened in the past, and this is why on the stock market, they talk about past results don't guarantee future value. And yet, and yet I know for a fact that people will look to the history all the time so when we are playing cash flow with the real life simulator that Lana and I have created, um, it is very often the case that we have the 52 week trading range, otherwise known as the, uh, the, the, the trading range. And it shows what the stock has done for the last 52 weeks, which is the last year, obviously. And yes, there is a very good chance that the stock will continue to bounce in amongst that range. However, if the company does something very illegal and very dodgy, then that will not hold up. If the company outperforms and sells twice as many uh, of their widgets or whatever it is that they sell, then of course, the stock price can rise very dramatically. And if everybody's been anchored, which is illegal nowadays, but if everybody has been anchored or if somebody is using a trading scheme or if they're doing a pump and dump or whatever it is that they are doing, um, those kinds of things are going to also anchor you to a higher price. So when you're playing cash flow, uh, you have an idea of what that stock will do and you're going to buy it based off of that. So be very careful when numbers show up before you know the actual value of it or unless you've already come up with a value for yourself. So before anybody is going to mention numbers, let them know that you want to do your own calculations, that you want to do your own thinking about it. So before going to an auction, Maybe decide for yourself how much that property is worth and ignore what anybody else says surrounding properties are worth or whatever else it is that they're telling you, and you'll be much more in control. Speaking of that, um, I, well, yes, I'll come to what chapter is next in just a second, but I also wanted to discuss very quickly because I was uh, doing some research on Bitcoin and gold and different things this morning, and I found a very interesting article that I wanted to share with you, which is somewhat related, and it's about BlackRock. Who knows about BlackRock? It's a company that is one of the largest investment firms in the world, and they are the who's who of investing in that sense. And they were talking this morning about preferring to hold on to cash as opposed to Bitcoin or gold. So they actually got rid of a lot of their gold, and they believe that that's going to uh, stable out. And they were also talking about the fact that cash is more valuable uh, than anything else at the moment, because they believe that inflation will peak at 3%. I believe it's a lot higher. I think that this might be a bit of propaganda 
coming in. But they have decided that they're going to let go of all of their gold and Bitcoin because they prefer to just hold cash right now. So very interesting, something you might like to take into consideration for your investing. So just wanted to quickly add that on. So that was chapter 30 tomorrow, chapter 31. How to relieve people of their millions. And this one is called induction. So that'll be a very interesting one. Um, for those of you who want to illegally get millions of dollars, um, I recommend doing it legally. Um, but this is how to prevent yourself from being relieved of millions of dollars or thousands of dollars or whatever it is that you have. Most people are going to be in danger at some stage of having somebody wanting to take their money. We live in a money society and money is very important to people. So they will almost sometimes do whatever is necessary to be able to get it. Anyhow, that was today's chapter uh, with a little bit of extra, some commentary. I hope you enjoyed and go out and create some really amazing things because when you know the things uh, in the art of thinking clearly, it will prepare you for the world in a way that you're going to be able to react better than when you've conditioned, when you've been conditioned and programmed to react in a certain way. So I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. And we've got some smiley faces and all sorts of really fun things over here that somebody's posted. So I'm going to say thank you for that, Sheila. And have an amazing day. And I'll see you all tomorrow for the next chapter. Oh, oh, oh.